Welcome to Natural Stone Systems TV. I am Than Norman, and today on episode number two, we are going to talk about tools and some of the things that you would put on a tool. Well, first to get started, uh, I've got four different tools out here. Uh, three of them are kind of the same, can do kind of the same things. The fourth one is a little bit different. Um, that one's in a category by itself. Here's what we've got here. I've got two different electric grinders out here, and the only difference between them is this one is a variable speed tool, this one is not a variable speed tool. When you go and look for an angle grinder, some of the things that were important to me were, um, they ask you what RPMs do you want to have it spin at. If it's not a variable speed angle grinder, they're all going to spin somewhere between 9,000 and 13,000, uh, probably on the high side, revolutions per minute, how fast this spins. And it doesn't matter. If you get a non-variable, or if you get a variable speed, they're going to spin somewhere between 500 and probably around 10,000 RPMs. How low do they go? I mean, because some of them, they're trying to tell you that on the fact that they're, uh, the slower the RPM, you know, that's an advantage in that tool. What I'm going to tell you is, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. It only matters if you need a variable speed tool, that it is a variable speed tool. So, when I'm looking for it, uh, this was a brand that I liked, and the reason why I liked it is because if I'm using it as a cutting uh, tool, it's got plastic on the side, so I don't have this, uh, this housing that if I do end up touching the stone, the metal housing isn't being dragged across the stone. So, both of these tools, if you want to know, for example, this tool spins at uh, on the low side, 3,000 RPMs on the high side, uh, 10,000 RPMs. This non-variable speed angle grinder, uh, when it's turned on, just spins at uh, 9,000 RPMs. Okay, so those are two cutting tools. Now, let's switch gears. We're not going to talk about these others. We're going to talk about what we would put on these cutting tools. The first thing that we've got, if you're going to cut anything out, uh, you're going to need a blade. These blades go on and they are directional. So most blades, if not all blades, will have an arrow on there so you know which way to put it on, which means you also need to know which way your tool spins. And you're locked and ready to go. Okay, so this here for cutting purposes for granite, you just need a lot of RPMs. It doesn't matter if you have the variable speed or the non-variable speed. For cutting, you just need it maxed out. Turn it up as fast as it'll go or use the non-variable speed tool. Some different blades that you might be interested in. So here is a rotting blade. This rotting blade here goes on the same tool. If you're going to use a rotting blade, you just turn it up to the max RPMs. The difference between a rotting blade and a regular blade is just thickness. Would I ever use this for just cutting? No, huh? just for rotting. Another specialty blade that you will use on an angle grinder is this contour blade. Okay, And a contour blade only goes on the tool this way. You don't want to put this on that way. Okay, So when you're using a contour blade, that's the way that it goes. And you'll know that just by looking at the direction, but a lot of times I've gotten the question, well, which way do you put it on? Well, look at the way that your arrow goes and put it on that direction, and it will always be like that. Okay? Again, all of your blades spin at max RPMs. Now, that's these two tools right here. So now we are going to switch and talk about, because we're going to address some grinding stones here in a minute. Uh, if you want to use any of those, they're a silicone carbide grinding stone, is what they are. And these aren't expensive. They're probably on the high side, around $7. Um, oh, that was the other thing about these blades. You can pay as cheap as probably 10 bucks a blade, and you can pay as much as probably $60 a blade. Uh, your contour blades, you can probably get those for right around, uh, I'm going to guess right around 30 bucks, and as much as probably 85, 90 bucks for a contour blade. How long do they last? Well, all of your blades are made out of, uh, they've got a metal matrix in the diamond. So the hotter you get that metal matrix, the faster that exposes the diamonds, which means that it cuts well 
but it also means that your two, that your blades are going to wear down more quickly. Um, this contour blade has probably done, oh my word, I bet you we've probably done just on this blade right around uh, 30 cutouts, 30 top mount vanity cutouts, and we're still at over probably 70% of the blade life on this one. This one here is pretty new. It just kind of depends on how much lineal footage of cutting that you are doing. Uh, but if you're going to use these just for cutting, let's say that you're just doing uh, cooktop cutouts and sink cutouts, you're probably going to get somewhere in the neighborhood as long as you are not binding it up, as long as you are not heating your blade up excessively, uh, you should get lots and lots of cutouts out of it. So, 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 so just plan on having those last a long time. Okay, for grinding, this here is a, uh, it's a grinder, and I like it, and you don't have to use one of these. This you need to have. This you don't need to have. I like it because I like using a heavier tool. These silicon carbide wheels will thread on to any one of these tools. You can use these wheels on these tools. Uh, the only thing that I would probably recommend is uh, these just feel small. I just don't like having my fingers that close to it. But all you, you can use it. You can do whatever you'd like. This one here goes on here, that's how that's threaded on, and that's how that tool works. These silicon carbide wheels, I already told you, not very expensive, um, right around you know six to probably ten bucks a piece, and they come in different grits. So you can get down to a 36 grit and up to, uh, I don't know if they still make a 400 grit, but they, they still make a, a, a 220 grit, uh, and, and, you, and you can just go through the different grits. What would you use those for? You would use these as the cutting surface on the side for inside corners or this flat surface here to work on flat edges. Now, one of the things that you need to know about that specific uh, um, abrasive is that it does start to chatter, you know, and, and, and you'll feel that uh, on both surfaces, on the side and on the front. That doesn't mean that it's garbage. And there was, you know, I had some people that said that they didn't like those because they started to chatter and then all of a sudden they just threw them away. If you get that, if you use those, you're going to need a stone dresser. This stone dresser, what that does is, while these are on the tool, while the tool is running, you take this tool and you run it on the cutting surface or on the cutting surface. And what that does is it re flattens out those edges. Okay? So that's that right there. This is a cup wheel. And cup wheels come in different types. There's, uh, there's turbo style, which means that there's little grooves in it. There's a uh, continuous rim, uh, which is what this is here, where it's just a flat surface. There are resin, where it's a turbo style with uh, some sort of uh, resin in between the cutting edges. And it just is supposed to make it so it doesn't chatter as much. Um, and these here are threaded. And they go on, I use these on this tool. What RPM does this spin at? Max RPM. So we still haven't even addressed why you would need a variable speed tool. Okay, so that's a cup wheel. Do you need a cup wheel? It depends on the type of person you are. I'm a little bit more type A, and my problem is, is that I'm not very patient. I could probably sit there for a long time and effectively remove material, material with this, not nearly as quickly as I can with this. So just figure out what kind of person you are. Because if, if anybody ever sent me an email and said, you know, can I get this done instead of using this? Absolutely. I just am not patient enough to wait for this one to be effective. So I'll remove stock material with this, and then I'll go through those grits. How much are these? You know, these are actually pretty pricey. They're probably getting close to somewhere between maybe maybe 60 bucks and 100 bucks for a different cup wheel. Uh, different brands, different things. So anyway, so, so that's that. So now we've talked about cutting, we've talked about grinding, but we haven't talked about polishing. Okay, polishing is, and there's different types, and we're not going to get into that today really, uh, the different types of polishing pads. There's wet and dry, so I guess I sort of got into it. Okay, the polishing pads, these are Velcro, okay? The reason why I point that out, or hook and loop, I don't know what brand it is, Velcro is not going to stay on here if you've got this thing spinning at a gazillion miles per hour. 
9,000 RPMs, it's not going to hang on. It's just going to spin off and fly somewhere else. Okay, and polishing pads can be kind of pricey. You can get a cheap set, and there's a lot of different technologies out where you can get maybe a six-step process, a five-step process, uh, or up to uh, you know the ones that have the most are like a 50, uh, 100 to 120, 150, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and above. So you can get up to probably an eight-step process for the polishing pads. That's why if you are going to do polishing. If you are going to do any polishing at all, and this is the tool that you are using, uh, you need a variable speed angle grinder because you need to be able to turn the speed down. So if you're going to polish, you need a variable speed tool. This I brought out just because I've had a lot of people ask the question, do you like electric, do you like pneumatic? It depends on what you're doing. If you're just polishing the ends of splash and you're doing it in somebody's house, you're not going to use a water-fed tool. You're not going to use wet pads. You're probably going to use dry pads. Uh, and this here is a water-fed tool. Now this here is, uh, it's nice because it's lighter weight. So if you're doing a lot of polishing, uh, you can get a tool like this. These here are somewhere right around $200. This is getting closer to $300. Now, I guess there's a couple things over here that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, and both of these things are, that's a specialty item. This isn't a specialty item. This here is a Corvette. Now a lot of people ask the question, what size Corbett do I, should I use? The answer is, uh, with a 1 and 3 eighths Corbett, you will drill an appropriate sized hole for vanities or for kitchen sinks. Okay, you can get Corbetts for probably as cheap as 50 bucks, maybe a little bit less, and as much as 100 bucks. The two different types are wet and dry. Most people, most fabricators are probably going to want to drill, be able to drill holes on site. So with the dry technology of the Corbett's, it's just kind of a nice place to be because you won't need the water, you won't, need the, you won't make the mess, you can just pop all your holes in on site with this bit, okay? A 1 and 3 eighths Corbett. The last item that I'm going to show you in today's episode is this, okay? And uh, it's because I've had a lot of people ask about it, and I like it, and they come in different sizes. There's some that I didn't like at all. I saw some videos, and I've had uh, some zero-tolerance wheels, and I'm just going to tell you what I honestly think. My problem with the zero-tolerance wheels is that they chattered like a son of a gun. And what that meant was, you know, because honestly, I can hang on to something if it's bumping around. The thing I can't deal with is uh, when it's bumping around, there's something else going on, and that something else going on is chipping. Okay? And the reason why I like this is because if I'm going to be grinding any inside corners, this has not chattered. It's just a very smooth cutting surface and does a pretty darn effective job. So this comes in different grits and I already told you earlier the reason why I got this is because I'm not patient enough for this and if I'm not patient enough for this on the inside corners or on the flat work then I'm definitely not patient enough for it to do the inside corner work which is why I got this. So and this right here I think I paid oh probably around $150 for it um, it will last, I'm sure, a long time. A lot of my buddies are in the same line of work, and what I've found is, is that they've had one of these in their toolbox for years, and it just works for a very long time. They've got different grits. Uh, I got the 60 because it was the most aggressive one that they've got. Am I a believer in the 80s or the 120s or whatever? Uh, no, uh -uh, not yet, but maybe someday I'll be a believer in those. So I just get the most aggressive one that I can get so that I can have the fastest cutting surface uh, that I can have. So... That was today's introduction to tools. I hope you've enjoyed episode two of Natural Stone Systems TV. Uh, thanks for uh, looking us up on YouTube and leave comments, ask questions. And in the next episode, we're going to deal with actually using these tools. Today was an introduction. The next episode will be using the tools.